John Brown, of course, had spent time in the Boston area uh, collecting support. He organized his secret six of supporters who financially helped him organize his plan and ex try to execute it. So in, in 1858, he had been hearing about Harriet Tubman from many of these abolitionists in, New, in uh, New England, in Boston, and in central New York. And many of them encouraged him to talk to Harriet because she had been going back and forth into Maryland. She knew so many fugitive slaves living in Canada. They thought that she could help him either with his direct plan of invading or at least to recruit soldiers for his planned raid. So um, by the time they met in April of 1858, um, he had a, quite an amazing image of her. And um, she was a little skeptical of him. They met in her home on North Street in St. Catharines. And it didn't take very long for them to really become very close. And they admired each other tremendously. He called her General Tubman, which was a tremendous uh, uh, compliment to her because the pinnacle of someone's career, a white man's career, was to be a general. And to call this small, little, illiterate, ins formerly enslaved woman general was an incredible compliment. He thought she was amazing. And of course, she thought that he was the most incredible white man that ever lived, because he was willing to die for her people, as she put it, that he was going to put his life on the line for them. And unfortunately, she did recruit people for his provisional army. Uh, many of them were uh, former slaves from Dorchester County, um, but they ended up not following him in October of 1859, and neither did Harriet. And of course, it was a great regret of hers, but she survived. Um, and she knew that he had been martyred for an important cause.